Hello friends, let's talk about charting the stock market using candlesticks. I love candlesticks, it's something I use all the time. It's a great way of representing time series data in a simple and very uh, revealing, very telling way. This In this video, I wanna use Plotly. I've done uh, plenty of videos using other tools such as Matplotlib. Uh, if you're looking for those, you can simply go to my website, viralml.com, V-I-R-L-A-L-M-L.com. Hit the finance button and you'll see all my other videos on finance. This video will be classified there, and it's somewhere here. There it is, simple candlestick charting, and I'm using the MPL finance package with Matplotlib. It is pretty cool, but not as powerful as Plotly. That's why I'm really loving Plotly. While we're here, um, I, I recently did uh, uh, two cool videos here, one uh, using price profiles charts in Python, where you get to see the volume. Uh, in this case, it's the price volume, not really the, the, the amount of uh, times we see that closing price, um, is as a uh, vertical chart on top over laid uh, the price. So this is actually done in Matplotlib. But in this video, we are going to use Plotly. Plotly is really cool. Uh, P-L-O-T-L-Y.com. You can find all the sorts of details on it. It works in all sorts of languages. And if you like the chart JS way of uh, creating charts, you're going to love this. It's going to be very simple. And if you don't, it won't take you much time. It's pretty easy. And the example we'll use here today is very simple. It's very powerful. Uh, you can do these cool animations. Here is an animation I did about the uh, stock market, right? You can see how it's moving. It's really cool. Um, let me stop it here. Uh, so we are going to use uh, Plotly and all the code you need is in the Jupyter Notebook extract. So cl click the, dis the description. There is a Jupyter no Notebook HTML extract and, you know, just copy and paste those in your own notebook. So before I start, welcome to the Valmel Show. My name is Manuel. I'm going to take your host. Please sign up at my for my newsletter at viralml.com and here it is upper left you'll get my updates on my videos uh updates on uh you know uh, my my classes and also uh, deals on classes which i have on a regular basis and i'll talk about this at the end of the class so uh everything you need is here remember the the link for the code is included in the description so what's a candlestick the best place to know about candlesticks is to go to wikipedia hit put candlesticks chart and this is uh steve neeson is the one that kind of brought this to the western world uh in, in in his book but it's actually very old it's been used uh over 100 years ago uh for rice trading to trade rice in uh, japan and here is a typical example of a candlestick it looks like a candle with two wicks and it basically tells you in this case the market opened here um, the, uh, the the buyers tried to push the market up and they were rejected. So it went below the open, uh, it went down, uh, and the sellers tried to push it down to this low and they were rejected and it closed here. So you can see the body represents kind of where the, the real uh, price action was. And here it tells you where there are some buyers that lost and where sellers lost. And it tells you a lot, right? Just these two points, you can see what's going on in the markets and they're also to different shapes. And we'll look at that in the, the, the chart we are gonna create. And uh, the chart we're going to create is right here. This is it. And we'll, we'll talk about it briefly. Uh, but I really want, just want to show you how to do it. That's the, 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 the main, main goal of this video. So we're going to need data. Uh, let's go to uh, yahoo, uh, finance.yahoo.com. Uh, it's my go-to site to get end-of-day data. And type in EEM. And it represents the uh, emerging markets ETFs. I'm going to change it up. I'm not going to use the S&P 500 like I use in my videos. Hit the historical data tab, the date range as usual. Click as much data as you can. Here we see we go from 2003 to 2020. Apply and download. And you'll notice this data is perfect for us because um, as you saw here in, uh, in the candlesticks in, in Wikipedia, we're going to need, you can basically represent, let's say this is a, pretend this is a five minute um, a chart and every, every candle is five minutes. So this is the first minute, the first, you know, second of that five minutes is going to be the open. The last second uh, of the five minutes is going to be the closing price. And you're going to have a high and a low, the highest point of those five minutes and the lowest point of those five minutes. So basically every five minutes, you're going to need four data points. And in some cases they give you the volume. So you'll have five data points. So this is perfect. When you go to Yahoo, you'll see they give you the open, high, low, close, the date, of course, and even the volume. So one thing you need to do, and I forgot to mention that before, get the weekly data. It'll be a little bit better for us to see instead of daily data, we'll get weekly data. So hit, hit weekly, hit apply and download. And I really recommend you to play with the weekly, the monthly and the daily. It's a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you put that data, that CSV file in the same folder where you're running, where you're going to run your Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I'm going to uh, load a few libraries. If you haven't, if you don't have Plotly, you'll have to pip install it or however you install it on your local machine. Uh, and we're going to import it. 
Uh, we're going to import pandas and numpies. And I have a path to my market data. In this case, I'm going to put it right underneath my Jupyter Notebook. People in the past had trouble with that, so I'm going to do that. But if you still like to use a path, like I normally do, you know, I'm, it's there. Just uh, uncomment it and put your own path. The symbol is EEM, Emerging Markets. Uh, we're going to read it in memory by using pandas.read underscore CSV. If you have a path, you ha you'll have it here. If it's blank, it's blank. The symbol plus dot CSV. And that's going to load in memory as data underscore DF as a variable. We're going to cast a date as a date time. It comes out as an object out of the box. We want as a date time for any plotting. It's very important that uh, matplotlib or plotly know that you're dealing with date time because then they can do some fancy labeling uh, because they know it's a date. They know how to handle that label. Uh, we're going to sort everything in ascending order, as I usually do. Uh, this is very important if you're dealing with multiple data sources, especially data sources from different uh, sources that may be uh, default. The ordering may, may be defaulted differently. And, it's, and then if you add moving averages, you, you, know, you want to make sure everything you know, starts with the oldest data and ends with the newest data. We're going to print the, uh, o the oldest date and the newest date just to confirm how much data we have. And like we saw, we have from 2003 to 2020, so plenty of data to play around. I'm actually going to cut the data, so we're going to do a subset of the data. So I'm going to say basically give me data underscore DF and give me everything that's, uh, that's bigger than 2019. And basically, it's going to chop that uh, data frame into a subset, and we're going to have a lot less data. We're going to have one year, 2019, sorry, two years, 2019 to 2020, and it's going to make our charts a lot better. Remember, we're dealing with a weekly chart. And actually, let's take a, a peek at that chart. That's one thing we did not do. And that could be nice. Uh, let's do a head. Just to confirm the weekly, right? You can see here 2003, 0414, to, uh, next one is 0421, 0428. So it's weekly data. And we confirm we have open, high, low, close, even the adjusted close, but we're not going to use it here. And the volume. This is everything. All the, you know, these four data points are critical to make a candle. Uh, you'll see how it works. So we're going to call, we're going to create this plotly underscore data. This is going to be a data frame just for uh, our charts and a layout um, a, a layout list. So plotly underscore data list and a, and a layout list. And you'll see how it worked. If you had multiple uh, time series on that one chart, you'd have multiple of these data. You'd be appending more. In this case, we're simply going to append uh, a candlestick set. So in this case, it's, you know, the, the list is plotly underscore data dot append. And here is what we're going to append. We're going to append one go dot candlestick, which basically is telling, uh, is telling plotly that, hey, we want to do candlesticks in this case. And it knows that it's going to expect a date field, an open, a high, a low, a close, and the name uh, of what this, uh, you know, the, the legend, the legend of what this uh, time series is all about. But you, you definitely need the open, high, low, close, and the date to be able to form those four points in a single candle, right? There. So it's really five points because of the date in this case, and you need those to do that. So now we loaded that in our plotly underscore data. We're going to deal with a layout. The layout allows you, it's kind of, you think about chart JS, you, you kind of adding all these different layers. So here we add one data layer. We're not doing multiple data layers in this video. I'll, in, uh, in next ones, I'll do multiple. Uh, and then we're going to add a layout layer. So again, it's go.layout. And here you can say all sorts of things. And I recommend looking at the Plotly documentation because there's everything under the sun you can do. This is where you'd add uh, separate axes. This is where you would add animations. All, everything happens right there. So uh, you would do, we're going to do a title. We are going to, in our X axis, we're going to put the date and I'm going to do visible false. Actually, let me start with true just to show you how that works. It gives us a little kind of a little slider that helps you zoom in specific areas. And the Y axis is going to be the price. So you tile it. So it shows price, show grid true. We want to have the background grid. The color is going to be black, the grid width and all, you know, all these typical, typical things, the plot background and the, uh, the plot, the, the border of the, of the, of the plot. So that's all we need. And then we are packaging both, uh, we're calling go.figure and we're saying this is the data and this is the layout and show us the figure. And when you run this, that's it. You get this really cool looking uh, uh, chart. Uh, our title is here. You get some controls here. I'll talk about this a bit, uh, really cool stuff. But here is our chart. So this is how the slider works. You can zoom in. And if you look at some professional sites out there, you can, you know, you can see how it works. It allows you to kind of focus, zoom in specific areas. I think it's really handy. If you don't want this, because um, uh, there's, an there's an advantage and a disadvantage. Here you can quickly zoom in and then you can even uh, zoom in this way. So there's two ways. You can drag a little square area on the chart itself. And to go back, to default it back to where it was, you hit reset axes and everything goes back to normal. Uh, if you change the uh, the range slider to false, meaning we don't want the range slider, I actually don't like the range slider, I don't use it. 
it will, you'll have more space. So your chart will be bigger. Uh, you have more space. You see there's no range chart and you can still zoom in very easily. Um, for example, here, let's say I just want to look at this section right here. It blows it up. You zoom in. So really cool. And again, to get out of it, you would hit the uh, reset axis. And you have all sorts of other tools. You can zoom in. You can do the, the lasso select. You can take a picture, right? All sorts of cool things. Uh, but this is basically how you do a very simple, cool candlestick uh, chart in um, in Python. As long as you have the open, uh, high, low, close, and the date, you are ready to go. You can simply inject it. So here, this is weekly, as you can see. The dates are here. You could do daily. You could do monthly, however you want it. Uh, let's quickly look at some of this price action for fun. We can see the market, in this case, opened um, a weekly chart. So these, every, every bar represents one week of data. We can see, the if you, if you hover over it, you can see the date. You can see it open at 39 and some, and it closed at 40 and 73. So that's why the, the the, the, the candlestick is green. That means the market's going up. And we have some nice solid bars going up here. Like we can actually, let's zoom in here. That's the, the fun of this. So we see the market open very strongly and it's going up. So here is very, definitely a very bullish leg. People, there are more buyers and sellers. And here you see some selling comes in. Um, and you can see uh, it was very timid selling. People, the sellers were very weak. Uh, they tried to, um, uh, you know, they tried to bring the market down. They couldn't, they couldn't go uh, beyond, beyond the, the previous low. Uh, but they did slow down. You can see here there was some buying that failed and it, it ended up as a small body. So Basically, this, if you look at these three big, four big bodies here uh, as bullish and you see a small bearish one, you can see as troubling. So when there's another one, this could be a buying opportunity. Why not? And the market kept on going up. Uh, and uh, this is the way you would look at it. You can compare the size of the bodies. You can compare where the wicks, the rejections of the buying, the rejections of the selling are, if there are gaps, all these things. Uh, uh, that's the beauty of uh, candlestick charting. Uh, Steve Neeson, you can find him on Amazon. He has, a, he has his books that go through many different patterns of single patterns. That means you're at the top of the market, the bottom of the market, or composed patterns. Uh, and plenty of different ways. I'll, I'll cover a few that I like uh, in, in, you know, in, in the next videos. I tend to not look at the those um, candlesticks uh, charts too uh, closely. I am more looking at when you know the market as price action is kind of slowing down, and when there's rejection prices. Usually, you can tell like here, the small bars, the buyers are weak, the sellers are weak. You can tell that you know even though the market has been going up for a few uh, for a few weeks, you can say that the market is slowing down. And look at that, it's clearly going down. People here, people are hesitant. It may be a news event, there may be something going on. There has an end in the market, you know, starts going down, reverses order. So that's what this is. Here's clearly uh, what we saw with the you know the COVID-19 that's kind of a crash that's a bit it's called a black swan it's a bit hard to predict uh and then it crashes but that's a you know I really like these kind of charts I think they're very easy to uh to understand what's going on it's a very clever way of aggregating time series data so you can use this for for, for um, financial uh, data but you can also use it for other data I've actually done a video using heart monitor data and I use candlesticks it was just perfect for uh time series it's very good for most time series uh, so before I end, I like you know, uh, talking about some of my material, uh, plugging some of my material. So you go to viralmail.com. First of all, uh, during you know COVID-19, uh, the stay at home, all the classes are at 50%. Uh, and you can hit the classes button and you'll see all my videos, my classes. I have four tracks, the machine learning, market analysis, entrepreneur, and uh, uh, web maker track. In this, for this video, I would recommend the market analysis track. Click on there. Uh, we talk about all sorts of things, where to get the data, the, the S&P 500, the VIX. We talk about the inverted yield, uh, oil, gold dec decoupling. We even look at uh, Bitcoin, inverted yields, all sorts of good stuff. And you get my ebook. This ebook, you can find it on Amazon, but you can also, um, you will, if you get the, the, this track, you'll also get it for free. Uh, I'll, I send the ebook on the fifth week. And one last thing I want to mention. Um, there is a free section here. I have a series of free Udemy classes. This is mostly about machine learning and NLP. So if you're interested in machine learning uh, and you have a, a Udemy account, if you don't, you can very easily get a Udemy account. Uh, and these are all free classes. People like them, a lot of good reviews. Uh, I'm some, I don't know, 25,000 students took them. So I would highly recommend them. Again, thanks for watching. I will do more videos on um, on candlesticks. And uh, uh, I will do a, um, uh, one of the videos I want to do is uh, adding some, um, uh, technical indicators like some uh, moving averages or or taking the moving average of the closing and overlaying it doing multiple overlays on a plotly and i'll also show you how to do these in another video uh, i'll do um, an animation so if you if you're interested in any of these things you know put in the comments that hey i really want to see this or i really want to see that regarding candlesticks i really want to cover it more not just trading patterns but also how to use it in python thanks for watching